So you want to drive a forklift. Today I want to show you how to take pallets out the racking. The bottom pallet, the middle pallet, the top pallet. I have my own methods on how to do it. I'd like to share it with you. We'll start with the bottom pallet. do is line your forks up to the pallet. You don't want to enter your pallet on an angle. If you enter your pallet on an angle, you run a risk of knocking the pallet over from one side to the other. So if you come in, make sure you line up at the pallet straight. If you're not lined up, pull back out and come back in again and line up. We have entered the pallet. Note, there's a gap down the bottom and there's a gap up the top. The reason for the gap is you do not want to put the low backrest underneath the pallet. If you go to lift the low backrest up, you'll find you'll end up knocking the pallet. We have lifted the pallet up to clear the floor. Notice the gap and allowed us to have clearance on the pallet above the bottom pallet. Be careful when lifting the pallet up as you don't want to hit the rack underneath. the racking so we're well clear on it. So now we can work to securing the pallet onto your forklifts. By securing it you drive forward you get rid of the gap. You can't have the gap there while you're driving. You'll put the load centre off. You put the load centre off you've got a high risk of tipping your forklift. We also want to push it in, close the gap, lift it up and tilt back. Tilt back will secure your load on the forks. In case you need to have to stop in an emergency, your pallet will stay, secure, stay securely on your forks. the course. Notice you pulled up, you're nice and straight, parallel to the line, allowing room on the opposite side. I try to use this line as a guide approximately four inches away from the line. And straight. You must be straight before you put the pallet back in the rack. Or else you can end up hitting the racking or the pallet beside you. Put the pallet back in, 
It's the reverse of what you did to take the pallet out. So you pulled up nice and straight. You want to level the pallet first, place it on the ground, and reverse out to make the gap. safely take your pallet out and put your pallet back in to the bottom racking without damage to your racking, without damage to your forklift. Now we're going to show you the middle pallet. The middle pallet is different to the bottom pallet. You haven't got such a clear view when you're looking underneath the pallet. It's harder to judge what's going on under there. So this, when we put the pallet back in, we use the racking. I'm going to show you the method to take it out. The method to take it out is very similar to what we did down on the bottom pallet. forks up level to the pallet, the middle of the pallet. We have aligned the forklift up in the first place. We're up in the middle, now it's time to enter. And again, the same thing you did with the bottom pallet, you're going to do with the top pallet. You're going to drive the forks in and leave a small gap at the back between the pallet and the back of the forks. Gap, you've allowed for two things. One, if you had another pallet above your head, you're not going to knock it. Two, you prevent the weight of the forklift pressing up against the racking. Although the forklift can take a lot of weight down, or the racking can take a lot of weight down, it cannot take very much weight pressing against it. You will damage the rack. You lift the pallet up so it is clear from the racking. You need to make sure you have space through to the back of the pallet. So when you reverse out, you do not collect the pallet on the racking. You also need to be careful not to lift it too high. A trick of mine is to use a mark on the racking. You'll see this white blotch of paint. When I lift the pallet up, I don't go any higher than that notch that's in the middle of the blotch. That's my indicator. That way, I know I've got enough clearance height above me without damaging the racket. Now, all I need to do is to reverse out to clear the rack. Now I have 
have cleared away from the racking, I have enough room to lower my pallet, to close my gap, tilt my forklifts and do my drive. into the racking. The middle pallet is a little bit more complicated than the bottom pallet and the top pallet. I'm going to break it down into seven steps for you. The first step is to create the gap between the back of the forks and the pallet. Now we've created the gap, what we need to do, the next step, is to lift the pallet up to the height of the mark, the same mark we talked about earlier. To get your pallet to this height, look underneath the pallet. Never put your head outside the forklift. It can lead to extreme danger. Now, what we're going to do is put your pallet into the racking. Attempt to level it up to the pallet beside it. You need to enter the racking straight. You cannot make any manoeuvres while you're inside the racking. Again, you're running the risk of knocking the pallet beside you or knocking the racking. You want to keep your forefoot straight as you go in. The racking. We've leveled the pallet up to the pallet beside you. The next step you need to adjust to the environment that you're in. I'm going to exaggerate the moves so you have an understanding of what to do. But if you have a very tall pallet and you do the same manoeuvre, you run the risk of knocking the top of the pallet. The next step is to tilt the pallet back. Now remember, I'm exaggerating my move so you can see what I'm doing. The next step is to lower the pallet so the back of the front board or backboard, depends on which way you look at it. But the back of this particular board is level with the face of the rack. You don't want to be resting the pallet 
on the racking. If you rest the pallet on the racking, it's going to come undone for your next move. Watch. As you notice, we've left a small gap between the pallet and the racking. That is so we can perform our next manoeuvre. Our next manoeuvre was to move the pallet forward so the backboard is now resting up against the racking. No, we still have a gap for the forks. The gap there is to preserve the racking. We're not putting the weight of the forklift up against the racking and twisting the racking. So we need that gap there. So that gap is our buffer zone. Without that buffer zone, we could do some serious damage to the racking. There is only one manoeuvre left. That is now to level your pallet inside the racking. It's set up to be semi-automatic. It virtually stabilises itself inside the racking the way we do this, without damaging the racking. We are now going to show you the top pallet. How to take the pallet out, how to put the pallet back in. To take it out, it's very much like doing the bottom one. To put it back in, it's somewhat like the bottom one with a little bit of difference. I'll show you when we get there. For now, Let's take it out. The first thing we need to do is raise your forks up. Now we've raised the forks to the top, just like we did the bottom pallet, just like we did the middle pallet, we are going to do for the top pallet. We are going to drive the forks in and leave a small gap so we're not resting the weight of the forklift up against the racking. Now we can lift the pallet up, reverse out and lower it to the ground. And the same as we did before, we drive in, we close the gap, lift it up, tilt back, drive through the course and come to put it back in again.
similar to what we did for the bottom, the middle that we are going to do for the top. We are going to level the pallet, create your gap, lift it up the height of the shaft. This next part becomes a little bit different than the rest of the pallets. When I enter the racking, I need to line the height up, so I need to come in slowly. Once I've lined up the height, I need to keep the boards square to the racking. I need to keep adjusting the pallet so it's straight. The aim is to line up the backboard, the back of the backboard up with the face of the rack. Once you've entered, all you need to do is lower the pallet straight down. Your pallet is now sitting firmly on the rack. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope it helps you become a better forklift driver.